I'm Craig Kenneth, a relationship coach and a psychotherapist. Every relationship is different and every breakup is different. Work with me and you'll get professional help on your situation. Just click on the link in the description below or go to my website, AskCraig.net. Hi there, I'm Coach Craig Kenneth. I'm Coach Margaret. And today we're going to be talking about, are we meant to be? Well, if you're going through a difficult wow. situation in your breakup or a relationship mm -hmm. problem, one of the things you're probably constantly going back and forth with is, are we meant to be together? Right. Are we meant to do this? Is this going to work out? And it's constantly on your mind. Are we doing the right thing? Would we do a wrong thing if we didn't see about this? Mm -hmm. Sure, it's constantly on your mind, yeah. And so you're going to be weighing things all the time. You know, we had these problems, or but we had these great things. Are we going to be able to work this out? And so today we're going to be looking at a situation that kind of, you know, wonders from somebody's perspective. Yeah. Are we going to be able to yeah. do this? Yeah. Because there are a lot of different factors. Right? Every relationship has so many uh, different aspects about it, components. Absolutely. Uh, everybody has their own personal history coming into it. You have your own personal history with relationships, right. your attachment styles, your whatever traumas you may have experienced, any kind of abuse, mm -hmm. your parents' willingness to communicate with you and each other. There's a million different factors when you're looking at are you going to work things out? And sometimes, it's tough to discern because your situation is like looking really grim. Yep. And sometimes, you know, even if your situation looks like there's no hope, it doesn't mean you can't turn it around. No, it doesn't. And we see it again and again. And so you always want to make yourself the priority. You always want to make growing mental health, investing in yourself is the number one priority. You cannot go wrong with that. No, you can't. Regardless of what happens with this other person, if you invest in yourself, if you work on yourself, and you constantly grow, it's going to benefit either this relationship again, or the next person that you date. But either way, it's going to benefit you and who you date. So, you want to know how to make it more likely to be meant to be? Work on yourself. Work at it, yeah, right. Work it's not magic okay it's, you gotta make an effort you really have to make an effort to grow you probably have a lot of blind spots and everybody has their own blind spots and unless you've been in therapy for a long period of time you may not have worked through them or even knew what they were because I would work a lot of my blind spots when I would talk to Margaret right and and I would see things like oh my gosh I didn't realize people needed space in relationships space you said <laughs> what's that and it was like shocking to me. But once I saw that, it was such a click. Uh, it such was a, like a whole new world for you. Yeah. And it really helped shape. And so I'm hoping these videos right. will give you those blind spots and some clarity for yourself. I'm trying to save you some trouble and time here. <laughs> yes. Although it's not easy to do. It takes real hard work. Yeah. So this couple is in their early 30s. And they've been together for over five years. The man that did the email coaching with me was telling us a little bit about her family and he said that her parents are immigrants and from Central America they are still together but she sees them as unhappy so if she feels like her parents are unhappy together she's probably gonna feel like I don't know if I want to do a long-term relationship yes she is the questions gonna come up mm-hmm um, she is uh, she's got several siblings and she's in the middle of that and she said that you know her siblings are married and they're supportive with her she has issues with her father because he cheated on mom which really affected her so that's a big issue right there if she thinks men are cheaters or liars or can't stay faithful She's going to be probably more skeptical to get close to somebody. And there was also one instance, she says, of domestic violence. So there's something there. With dad. Yeah. That's right. Okay. So, uh, according to him, he says the reasons that she broke up with him 
or that she felt that after all the years of him not providing her with love and affection that she needed, she now feels emotionally disconnected from him. He says, I guess maybe because she started take, talking to another person and she realized she had a connection with him and not me. Must have been hard for him to hear that. It must have. But that's a real wake-up call. Yeah. You've been neglecting your partner for several years and then they start to feel a connection to somebody else. What is going to keep them trying to work it out with you when you've been disappointing them for so long? And then he didn't respond in the best possible way, right? Well, I think we're going to get to that. Okay. He says, at first I was calm, but then I found out she was talking to someone else and I started digging for information. Can you blame him? No. If you know your partner's up to something, you're going to want to research and you're going to, you know, be a lot of, there's going to be a lot of investigating, right? You turn into Sherlock Holmes. Searching for Facebook, interrogating her. That was the word that jumped out to me. Interrogating her. This is not a crime. They and were not even married. Uh, were they not married? They were not married. I, okay, and friends. Yeah. Uh, they've been together for five years. I thought maybe they were married. Maybe I misread no. that. I knew she had only told me a half truth, so I kept going at her to make her fess up. That sounds pretty aggressive. Yes, it does. And now I decided we should cut off all contact completely. I talked to everyone about it to search for answers because this was not her character. Well, I'm sure that didn't endear her to him any further if he talked to everyone they know about it. No, I'm sure she did not appreciate that. No. And he says that it wasn't her character, but what I found, Margaret, is that many, many people will do something out of character if they are starting to feel those kind of romantic feelings yeah. for somebody else. Or disconnected from the first person. Sure. Or both. Yeah. He says, I was unable to provide her with emotional security, passion, and affection. I was not a good conflict resolution person, unable to calmly sit down and talk about our problems. Instead, I would give ultimatums or walk away and not talk it all over. Over the years, it has degraded her. Probably literally correct. Yeah. Yeah. So when you start to realize how poorly you treated somebody, that could be a real wake-up call. It does sound like it's a wake-up call for him. He's, he's owning it and acknowledging it to his credit. Mm -hmm. yeah. He says, what can I do in hopes to have reconciliation for us to come together and work things out? He says, my ex-fiance just recently broke off a wedding. Really her call. So, okay, I, I knew there was a marriage they involved. Were, they, they were, were going to get married. They were engaged, okay. that's yeah. right. They had been engaged for a year and a half. You're right. Um, we originally mm -hmm. thought we would work on our problems to, before trying to get married, but again, ultimately everything kept spiraling and we are now separated. Our relationship lasted five years and it was not always easy. She had jealousy and insecurity problems. Meanwhile, I was not great at conflict resolution. We never called each other names, were manipulative or physical, but when we fought, I would sometimes be pushed to the edge so much that I would say something I didn't mean. So he was pushed to the edge by her, mm -hmm. I gather. That sounds like it. I have threatened to end our relationship multiple times and even threatened to call off the wedding one month before. Wow, so you know if you're threatening to call off the wedding a month before, that's going to leave her feeling like scared yeah. and confused and angry yeah. and uncertain mm -hmm. because if you have this, hey, huge event, we're getting married, we're going to spend our life together, and you're threatening to call it off, she's going to be like, I don't trust this guy. She's not going to feel... He's also quite explosive, it sounds like. He doesn't use that word, but it does sound like it. It does. Yeah. He says, after that fight, we talked about it, and I thought everything was fine. I cannot tell you how many times people tell me that. We got into a fight, I thought we fixed it, and then a week later we were broken up. Yeah. 
What happened? I thought it was okay. Yeah. However, she came to me weeks later saying she felt like she was disconnected from me and she no longer knew if this marriage was right for us. Before that, we had gone on another country to visit family and had a great time. She never gave me any signs that her love for me had faltered. She told me that the fight brought all of these underlying emotions in her and that she felt disconnected to me and had no emotional security all these years. Even after telling me what she needed, she felt she always tried for the sake of us and stopped putting her feelings as a priority, but now her love tank has ran dry. Her love tank. And a love tank is a good way of looking I like that. at... Yeah, I like it. I, I like the love tank yeah. because it's almost like an investment. And they say that you're supposed to have five positive interactions for every negative one to have a healthy relationship. If you're negative, 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 one positive, the love tank is going to dry up. But it also speaks to the term, you know, people talk about children needing emotional supplies. Like the kid will go to mother when they're little and kind of hold on to her knee for a while, get some emotional supplies, and then go explore again. So I like the whole concept. That's cool. Yeah. Love tank. Our five-year relationship started off rocky. She was still trying to resolve some things with her ex. He cheated on her. She wanted to give me a clean slate. However, once we started, her jealousy issues were rampant and I had a hard time dealing with it and I actually had to lose a close female friend which I resented her for, for a while. Mm. Yep, so I could see why that would bother him. She was, je yeah, she was jealous of a friend, yeah. We finished a two and a half year program together and I thought we were so strong if we made it out of that. Program. Yeah, a school program. Okay. But I think it just didn't give us time to work out our relationship. And throughout the jealousy issues were still there. She had made some great changes, but they were still there. During that last month before the wedding, it was extremely stressful. She was always a person of great integrity. Her family and friends and even I had always praised her about that. However, I had gut feelings that there might be someone else. And I found out through her call logs that she was speaking to someone for a few months behind my back. Ouch. Yeah. Uh, so, she's starting to use this other guy as an emotional support yeah. and connecting with him Meanwhile, your relationship is slowly falling apart. Right. So clearly she was startled when she started to feel something for the other guy. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> mm -hmm. She claims it was all platonic and as soon as she felt she had a con connection because of a good conversation, she immediately cut it off and turned back to us. But I bet that really made her think. Mm -hmm. Do I uh -oh. really want this? Yeah. I'm feeling things for other people. Yeah. Maybe I don't want to be with him. Yeah. However, the call log stopped two weeks before the wedding. This all spiraled and it got ugly. Our families are devastated as they all support us. I decided that we need to break up because on top of her emotional disconnection to me, now I have to forgive her for breaking my trust. She still is just as devastated as I am because she doesn't know if we should end it. But, says, if we are meant to be, we will be back together. Our relationship was great in my eyes. I'm not sure how he's seeing greatness with all the complaints and neither, neither problems. Yeah. Uh, Might have worked better for him than for her. We had all the same interests, financially stable, same life goals. Our intimacy was never an issue and our families loved each other. I have a feeling she made up her mind a long time ago as she let someone else into the picture. Is there any hope of reconciliation and how would I go about it? This is an overwhelming task, I would say. Yeah, this is pretty heavy duty. There are a lot of history and issues here with explosive um, anger towards each other a lot of jealousy, a lot of unresolved trust issues from both of you. Right. 
you she wasn't trusting you and yet she was the one that wound up talking to another guy behind your back right. which is interesting it is um, and of course you don't know anything about the circumstances of how it happened but yes it is interesting mm -hmm. um, certainly wouldn't advise them to continue with this marriage right now I think they'd be beginning with all kinds of unresolved baggage she also takes an oddly inactive stance toward if if we're meant to be together we'll be together almost like we don't have to do anything or we shouldn't do anything that the fates will just take care of it well let's decide what we want and then decide what we want to do you can't just wait and say gee the fates will take care of it if we're meant to be it'll sort itself out that's too passive for me yeah it really is and it's almost like I'm not going to do anything to really repair this. Yeah. I don't want to touch it. I'm just going to let to see how, where the chips fall. Yeah, that's yeah, that's exactly what I hear too. But that's that's not how a mature adult should handle this. No. I mean, they're talking about a lifetime commitment right. in this relationship, but this relationship over here is a disaster. Yeah. This wedding is not going to fix the problem. It's going to make it worse. Oh, look, look, yeah, oh, yes. Um, get married, that'll fix the problem, and then have a child, and that will certainly fix the problem, is what many of the relatives are going to tell them. And it would be a disaster. Um, if, if I were consulted about this, now we don't know, she's devastated too, he says. Mm -hmm. um, but it sounds to me like there's a lot of damage that has happened here. Yeah, the relationship sounds extremely unhealthy, yet he describes it as great. Well, and, and she's not saying it was terrible either, um, except she is, except she didn't know that until right before the wedding. But, but obviously she had, was keeping a secret for him for months, that he was talking to another guy. Yeah. She knew she was violating the, the relationship yeah, and betraying yeah, his trust and what yeah. she was doing was wrong. Yeah. And they have explosive fights. He was interrogating her. That's what was his words were. And she, he admitted that yeah. by using the word. Mm -hmm. yeah. But she wasn't come, being forthcoming and saying, okay, this is what's going on. We need to figure this out. There seems to be some love here, but yeah. at the same time, it's like, what are you guys doing with this? And our families love each other and so forth and so on. So all those other things are in place, which might have made it tempting to go through with the wedding. But thank heavens they didn't, and they had enough mm -hmm. sense to, to reach out. Um, I think they should talk and decide what they want. And if they want this relationship badly enough to work on it, I would say they should both get into individual therapy, followed by, say, six months time frame to start couples therapy. Yeah, there's um, no reason to pursue a marriage at this no, point. No, this no. relationship is like and in shambles at this point because they're, they're having massive fights, there's no yeah. trust, there's yeah. betrayal. She's jealous, right. he's jealous, they don't trust each other, no. he's giving ultimatums and he keeps threatening, he kept threatening to walk away. Yeah. So he had done this first, right. or at least maybe he did it first. He, they can't resolve conflicts, they're not communicating well, He owned well. that he couldn't. Yeah. Um, yes. yes. And good for him. Um, so yeah, they would have an awful lot of work to do before jumping into this. And you almost expect to hear we have to go through with it because we've hired the hall. Yeah. And no, and thank heaven they're not looking at it that way. It's not about their families, it's about them. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. it doesn't sound like there's any real love or happiness at this point. No. And she doesn't know what to do, which she's putting in sort of, the fates will take care of it. If we're meant to be, we'll work it out, whatever that means. Like I said, that's too passive for me. No. There's no point in continuing a marriage um, or, or getting into a marriage when this is the relationship and this is how it's going into it. Right. Okay? It's only going to get harder. And, you know, there's so many issues that it, he said it spiraled out of control. The families are devastated. Um, there's emotional disconnection. He doesn't trust her. She didn't trust, trust him. him. She made him give up his female friend. And he's, he's still angry. angry. He's been angry about it ever since. And he interrogated her. So they've got a long way to go. Did it say what their common interest was? They were in a training program together for something. Uh, for, I think it was a career, the same career, but it didn't get into specifics. Didn't tell us what. Um, but, I mean, they seem to care about each other. Yes, they do. But if this is going to get worked out, this is going to take two adults 
really looking at the issues here. I mean, he said there were a lot of good things, but it's, it's interesting because he says the relationship was great in his eyes, but then he listed all these other things that right. sounded pretty explosive. Yeah. So it can get, you know, it seems like it's a lot more complicated. Um, the families loved each other, so that's a positive. It sounds like both the families really cared about each other, yes. so that's, of course, something positive that you would get support from the families. But, you know, at this point she is talking to somebody else and not sure what she wants to do with And you're it. never quite sure what talking to means. I have heard talking to used as anything from really literally chatting to really being together. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm talking to somebody, I remember finally saying to her, you're doing a lot more than talking. Yeah. Yeah. So we don't know what end is there. I think, you know, both of you are going to have to sit down together and say, okay, w can we work through this? Can we work on this? Do you want to work on this? Right. Yes. Um, but, you know, this are we meant to be? Yeah, that, that, that struck me right away. Are we meant to be? In other words, do we get a vote in this? Yes, we do. Yeah. yeah. Yes, we do. You're meant but, to be if you sit down together and act like adults and right. say, hey, let's work through and this. And decide to work on it. But I'm so glad that they didn't go through with this, you know, because the, the hall had already been hired and the invitations went out. I'm, I hope that didn't happen. But at least they're not going to get into something that they'll regret for the next 35 years. Mm -hmm. I'm so glad they reached out first. This can be reconciled. I think so. But it's going to be... An effort. Yeah. This isn't going to magically fix itself. She's got trust issues. Now you've got trust issues. The communication between you guys needs to get worked on. You both need to sit down and say, "This is what I need from you. Can you do this? Right. This is and and both right. look at it and say, "Can we work through this? This is." Not it sounds like he had no idea what she really needed from him. She may not have been able to tell him. Um, or he may have gotten explosive when she tried. So, I mean, there are many things they could work on here, and I appreciate his honesty. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, and thank God they didn't march into a mistake. Yeah, yeah. because then if you get married, you're going to oh. be sitting there thinking, I should have never done this. You're going to be angry. You're going to be resentful that you went through it. When at least now you have more freedom to feel right. like, okay, what can we do to fix this, and do you want to? Right? Yes, and it almost seems like she didn't feel she had a choice, which is really what her verbiage says. If it's meant to be, then I, I won't have any choice and I'll have to go along with this. Mm -hmm. No, no, make a decision. Yeah. yeah. You're both free to make it, a decision. It sounds like an, almost like there's some immaturity behind yeah. that and, no, and more of a, I don't want to really deal with it. Yeah, or some, gonna... and also some old world mentality, I think, mm -hmm. somewhere when you look at it. Yeah. Tough situation. Yeah, so if we you're meant to be, well. if you're meant to be, it means because you've worked through some That's things. Right. It's not gonna these all these issues aren't gonna work through themselves. What is it? Eighty percent inspiration? No, um, perspiration and you know twenty percent inspiration. Okay. However that goes, you know <laughs> what I mean. It's effort. <laughs> it is effort, and it sounds like there's some love there, but yes. you gotta work through it. Yeah. Okay. And good luck. And if it's reasonable, please let us know. Mm -hmm. We'd love to know how you do. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, if you want to get our help personally, just go to my website, AskCraig.net. Sign up for the coaching option that works best for you. I do email coaching. I do Skype coaching. you got to get with me right away. I do offer emergency Skype coaching. Margaret is also available. Yes, please feel free to sign up with me. Just click on Margaret on the top of the website to sign up with a Skype coaching with her. Make sure you add me on Twitter. Just search Ask Craig Kenneth. I post different things on there that you can't see necessarily on the YouTube videos. It's different things. I'm going to try and post pictures, maybe pictures of Mar Margaret getting into trouble somewhere. Oh, yes, I do that all the time. Maybe one of her mug shots. You never know. But he always bails me out, thank God. <laughs> well, i got to have you here for the videos. Yeah, right. Except July. That's when I'm homicidal. <laughs> That's my, the anniversary of the time I shot up the, the motorcycle camp. <laughs> So people are like, what? what? You may have missed the video where we're we kidding, joked about that. Yes, it's a call back to another video. Right. Uh, but that's it for this video. I'm Coach Craig Kenneth. I'm Coach Margaret. And we will talk with you soon.